Well, let's now get another perspective on that. Michael Kugelman now joins us, Director, South Asia Institute at the Wilson Center. Michael, thank you so much for joining me. Now, we were having a discussion even in Washington, D.C., about the possible fallout uh, of this entire India-Canada issue. Now, right now, when these crises are happening in Ukraine and Russia and the Middle East and Israel and Gaza, I'm sure this would be a standoff that the U.S. and the world and the West in particular would be very happy not to see. How do you see it proceeding from here? Well, I mean, uh, if you're looking, if you're hoping for a, um, a de-escalation in the crisis, it is a good sign that uh, India announced that it will partially resume uh, visa services in, in Canada. That's significant. Um, you know, just because I think that these uh, these these visa suspensions, uh, visa processing suspensions, it it hits the relationship where it hurts the most. Just because people to people ties are a big part of the relationship. But you know, beyond that, um, my sense is that the trend lines uh, are not very positive at all. I don't see any type of rapprochement coming anytime soon. I mean, the fact that you know we now have a situation where Canada has removed two third what had been two thirds of its diplomatic presence in Canada in in India. That's very significant. And for Canada to accuse India of violating international law, that's escalatory as well um, to say that. And, uh, you know, now there's, you know, there's there's some some talk about the possibility of India looking to bring Canada to the FATF. Um, you know, I, that hasn't been confirmed, but there has been talk about that. If that were to take place, that would clearly be uh, another an escalation of the crisis um, even more. And, uh, you know, my sense is that there's not much incentive on either side to back down, uh, quite frankly. And I think that for India, this is especially important. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's important for New Delhi to be projecting strength in the face of what it describes as a very serious external threat posed by, by Sikh separatists in Canada. Whereas, you know, in Ottawa, you know, the position, you know, they remain very uh, firm on their position that, um, you know, India is pressuring Canada to do something that it has no right to do. And that in Ottawa's view, you know, these uh, what India describes as serious security threats are, in fact, just activists that deserve to be protected by, you know, democratic principles like freedom of assembly, so on and so forth. So, you know, if you want but to call it, Mike, yeah, neither side sorry. is willing to back down. Michael, I think you're right. And I, and I think, uh, as I was saying to you in Washington, D.C. as well, that there perhaps seems to have been a little misreading of the mood in Delhi and how much of a red line, red button issue the entire question of terrorism and Khalistani terrorism is actually in India. Um, the view uh, increasingly now in India on other issues also is that it's almost bizarre for Canada or for other countries to be talking about the Vienna Convention and the parity of diplomats when the first principle of the Vienna Convention is the safety of diplomats. And people are being given shelter and safe haven in some countries. People who are making direct threats against Indian diplomats. Uh, look at what happened to the Indian High Commission in London. They, they roughed up uh, you know, Indian security officers out there. That is a breach of the Vienna Convention. Right. I mean, one of the reasons why this crisis is as serious as it is, is that there's some very sharp disconnects between the two sides on, on many issues. One would be what I described before in terms of how each side perceives the threat posed by uh, by by these Khalistan uh, supporters. But indeed, what you said is also accurate. You know, Canada's position, as I understand it, is that uh, it was India's threat to uh, revoke the diplomatic immunity of these Canadian diplomats that they didn't leave. That was what it viewed as a violation of international law. But um, but you're right. I mean, it goes much, much further than that. And, you know, your the external affairs minister, Dr. Jay Shankar, also indicated that, um, you know, there's that it's perfectly legal and within the realm of the Vienna, Vienna conventions to promote the principle of parity, which entails, you know, having similarly uh, sized uh, diplomatic um, contingents in, in, in different countries. So, again, it depends where you sit, depends where you stand. Each capital looks at this issue very differently. All right, Michael Krugman, thank you so much for joining us with that perspective. Thank you.